internet trolls, internet haters, internet spammers, even death threats. We've dealt with all of it over the last 10 years. We've released about 20,000 pieces of content on the internet. And we're gonna tell you today how individual creators can deal with trolls and haters. We've got a bunch of methods that work, how media corporations deal with haters and trolls really effectively. And if somebody makes a physical threat to you or somebody you know, we've got an insane story about a top hip hop artist. There was a gun involved. They actually showed up with the gun. Threats on social media. We've dealt with the highest level threats that are legitimate. And we're gonna tell you all today how to deal with these haters Stop the haters, let's go. So before we even get into how to really deal with trolls, we do need to talk about the seriousness of death threats that come. And when you hit a certain level, or even if you don't hit a certain level, you may come across this. And a, a, a story that we have that we dealt with, I don't it's probably four or five years ago at this point. Uh, there was a, a major concert in Texas. We're not gonna give any company or artist names, by the way. A major, com a major concert in Texas that a, uh, a, a company that we were doing social media work for had put together and on about a couple days before the concert actually took place uh i noticed that on our instagram page the company's instagram page somebody has had made a threat to come to the concert and shoot this particular artist and we took this to higher ups and they said yeah just, you know just, just trolls just trolls don't worry about it um i didn't take no, no we didn't take that um to heart, we ended up calling the local police department and, um, and, t and telling them about the entire situation. And sure enough, somebody showed up with a gun and they had to cancel the entire concert. So the whole message behind this is when it comes to death threats, there's really never a scenario where you shouldn't take it seriously. Um, and, and unfortunately, it may be something that as a creator, you come across, you immediately need to contact the proper authorities, uh, if, especially if it's in a private message, especially if they're listing off names of family, if they have any information on you whatsoever, just don't, t you have to take it seriously. So that's the story that we were talking about, guys. You remember yeah. that? That was- Yeah, I've got one too, awful. similar to that. Uh, for another mm -hmm. company I worked for, uh, there were people that made that were making uh, like very specific death threats against the office of a company I worked for. And I remember I spoke to you, Ross, about it to ask your advice on how to handle this as well. And the policy on hate. So there, the point of telling you this at the beginning of the podcast, there are Internet trolls and haters. And then there are people that make threats. And so we want to make that distinction at the beginning of the podcast. If somebody makes a physical threat, you call the police without question. There's no scenario where you let it slip. There's no scenario where you let it go. You just call the police and you give them the information. And a lot of police departments now uh, actually have officers, detectives on board, and they're starting to on, uh, do training and what have you to uh, help these officers understand how to do research on social media and actually go deal with these threats. And they can actually piece together, like looking at somebody's Twitter account, triangulating with their Facebook and some comments they made here in a geotag there. And they can actually figure out who these people are and knock, knock, knock. They're knocking on their door and be like, hey, was this you? And they hold up their phone and they show the threat on the phone. Like that happens, call the police. So that's the distinction we wanna make at the beginning. Thanks for sharing that, Ross. I think you guys should always do that when it comes to haters. So taking it a level down from death threats, let's take it to the haters and trolls range now. How do you stop the haters and the trolls? And Perrin, you've done PR messaging and corporate messaging for megacorps and they have this like, ice cold approach to haters and to trolls sometimes that is insanely effective that we want to share with all the creators out there that are listening right now because there's something you can learn from it right uh so one of the most effective strategies that i would help companies employ uh versus haters and trolls and a lot of them don't like to hear this strategy because it sounds like you know as working in their with their pr team or being head of their social media it sounds like i'm really lazy but I just say, don't do anything. Just ignore it. <laughs> That's the strategy. The strategy is just to just ignore it. And this makes sense psychologically versus trolls and haters because they are coming and spewing hate online to, to and one of the main things they're doing this is because they're trying to elicit any sort of response out of you. Because by responding, you validate whatever they're saying, pretty much in any case whatsoever. If they're saying they hate you for X, Y, Z reason and you respond to that you validate it you make you make their opinion valid and you make them heard because now they know that you heard it and that was the main goal 
was they wanted you to know and they wanted you to mm -hmm. hear the hateful thing they had to say. So the second part is normally from a business perspective, saying anything at all, they fumble, there's a really high chance they'll fumble the response because they're just not very good at social media PR messaging. They're, they're good at corporate PR messaging uh, through, uh, through old school means, but in today's landscape where it's a lot more informal, they normally mess up and say something that ends up digging themselves a deeper hole because they're they're just not they're not in the trenches. They don't quite understand how the conversations actually go. So it's just better for them to not be a part of it. So one of the most successful successful strategies versus haters and trolls is just ice cold ignore it and don't let it affect you. And even the companies I've worked for would have so much trouble with this because I would tell them so hard hey, to do. How do you ignore that person that's trying to that's trying to incite you, right? Yeah, and then someone else in the company would report it and say like, "Hey, you know, they start talking to the CEO, maybe say, "Hey, did you see this? We should do something about this." And then the CEO would come back down after we'd already determined the PR strategy and be like, "Hey, should we do something about this?" And we'd be like, "No, yeah, the strategy is to ignore it. The strategy is to not engage with it, not engage." Eventually, I would get the companies on the page where Yes, not engaging works. It generally works. And when you do it over and over and over again, it really pushes trolls away because they know that you're not going to respond because they see mm -hmm. other trolls making posts and there's just no engagement on it and there's no reaction and no one gives a shit about that. That's yes. what makes it work is that when they throw out their loud voice out there, no one fucking cares. And when that happens, they don't keep doing it. So that strategy works for businesses. That's not necessarily the strategy, though, that will work for creators. So, Well, I'm going to hit pause button there before you go into that button. next part, because you're going to talk okay. about another strategy that could work for creators. I don't agree, but I know what you're going to say next. You're going to say, kill them with kindness. You know, throw some honey that's and some, strategy. Throw some sprinkles strategy. and sparkles out there and everybody will. No, I know that's not what you're going to say, but I would I want to double down on that. And I want to tell you guys. If you have a hard time emotionally dealing with haters and trolls and people coming at you on the internet, it's okay to uninstall a social media app. Mm. I just uninstalled YouTube uh, creator app myself as a guy that does this for a living. I don't wanna look at the YouTube comments anymore because I have a hard time emotionally dealing with the one in 20 comments that's a troll. So I just got rid of it. I cut it out. And I feel great and my business hasn't suffered at all as a result. Some of my other clients that are full-time, they make maybe in like the tens of thousands of dollars range as full-time creators, their policy is ban, block, mute, and fuck you. <laughs> That's their policy. And I was, I, I, at first I tried to tell them, why don't you kill them with kindness or blah, blah, blah. And then I realized over time, as you scale up as a creator, as your audience gets bigger and bigger and bigger as a creator, it becomes more and more difficult to respond to everyone. And so one way that you can deal with haters at scale, which is why mega media corps do this, is just to ignore them, to block them, to ban them, and then to never worry about them ever again. So it's a very valid strategy, but to your point, it is one tool in the tool belt that you should have available to you and isn't the only tool. And it's not necessarily the best tool for all situations. So I'll kick it back to you, Perrin, to talk about what those other tools might be. And Ross, I know you, uh, have some input on this as well. So what do you, th go ahead, Perrin. Yeah. So I think if you are smaller to medium sized, there's, there are strategies that you can take haters and trolls and actually convert them to be brand advocates, like really, really strong brand advocates. And one of my clients, he's a top tier YouTuber. He's a music YouTuber. He does this reliably still, even as a top talent, very, very successfully. And he still will personally do this. He has a strategy where he has he can see all comments across all of his brand. And particularly when he sees a hater, he just goes in there and says the nicest possible thing he says. <laughs> and you would be surprised how quickly that hater goes from, I fucking hate this guy to, oh crap, I kind of like, I kind of like this dude now. I kind of like this guy. Now it takes some practice on what to say because you have to be able to respond not out of, not out of being affected by the, the hateful comment itself. You have to be able to separate yourself and be on the outside and be above it and comment back. So it, it takes some emotional control. It takes some discipline to be able to do a strategy like this. Another way 
that you can, uh, another way you can respond if you don't have a ton of haters and it's not particularly like super hateful, a common thing is like, oh my God, you're such a noob at this game, right? This is for gamers. You're going to see this whenever you're playing terribly or something's happening and you're just getting owned in a game and then or just generally like out. you suck at whatever you're doing is a classic troll yeah. thing right <laughs> right uh just if you are kind of playing terribly and sucking own it like uh, this is what i'll do because most of the time i know when i'm playing terrible i'm like oh my god i'm doing so badly right now and someone will be like actually you're such a noob i'm like i know i am noobing it the hell up aren't i and they're like <laughs> right they're like oh yeah you kind of are you agree with me Oh, I guess you're kind of, I guess we had this, we were of the same mind. I guess I can relate to you a little bit. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep watching, right? So you can, you can change things around if you're able to be self-critical in a way that's not hurtful to yourself. But if you, if you can, un, if you understand criticism and constructive criticism, you can change trolls behavior around in a satirical way, in a sarcastic way, or just in a constructive way and put it back onto them. As as though you agree with them and their assessment, and if it is actually accurate. And now, if you're like dominating or whatever you're doing, like wow, you really suck. Their comment's not going to hold anyway, anyway, because obviously to everybody else, you're dominating whatever you're doing. But that's one way in which I've been able to convert trolls. Who and and this also really helps my viewing experience because a lot of people will come in looking for stellar gameplay, but instead I convert them into due to a great personality. That way, the skill level of the gameplay doesn't matter anymore. So there's a lot of pros to that strategy, but it requires some practice. Like I said, you have to be able to take a step back and not be emotionally attached to what someone says about you on the internet. And I found that as we age and get older, that's easier. But when you're younger, if you're in your teenage years or if you're lower 20s, it's probably going to affect you emotionally a lot more. And it might be more difficult to do that strategy. So everything affects you emotionally when you're in your teens and early twenties. I mean, I was the same way. So that's, it's almost impossible to ignore when you're young. It's really hard to do that strategy when you're younger. So I would just say, ignore it when you're younger. Now, do we want to talk about, you know, if this is affecting you emotionally, let's say that someone is continuing to get on your videos and they're continuing to say hateful things and it is starting to wear on you. It is starting to make you feel worse. Ross, what's, is there another solution here? Not just outside of just banning. What can we do for our own mental health in those type of situations? Uh, well, if it, if it's affecting you that much, I think for your own sanity, just ban or block them. But going back to what you said earlier, number one, with all with all this said, the number one thing that I think that you need to get into a pattern of doing is what parents said, and that's just ignoring it. Uh, number two, take a look at this from the per and this is where online communication really fouls a lot up we've all sat there and we've all watched streams so you all know what it's like to be a streamer we watch these we watch streamers like people are watching you parent people are watching you awol because they uh they, they feel some kind of connection to you so when they when people are saying oh you suck and all of that stuff understand that a lot of the time that's coming from that's coming almost coming from a friendship angle they're talking to you as a friend they tune into you because they see you as a friend even though you don't know who they are and what they're doing so remember that a lot of times they're just saying these things because well for one a lot of people are generally especially nowadays lonely there's not there's not a lot of friendships and uh or you're not allowed to or you can't really spend a lot of time with friends so when these situations come up and they say something that could be horrible uh, a lot of times it's just because that is how generally two good friends react with each other. I mean, we get on here every morning. We joke with each other. I mean, we're all calling each other names and stuff like that. If we didn't know each other, that'd be a whole different uh, conflict of interest there. However, from the perspective of a streamer, it's a one-sided street. They see it that way. They see you as a friend. They see you as somebody that they can joke around and do that stuff with. Now, obviously, there's a limit to what you can take. If somebody's jumping in your DMs and sending you you know, horrible stuff that, that then obviously that's a whole nother case. The way that I typically, I have, I typically take the kill them with kindness, uh, routine with them. When I get DMS, I literally got one last night saying that I deserve to be shot from one of my opinions. And I, I, I deleted it. But typically, it was because I said I, I, uh, had FIFA. I was talking about FIFA. Nobody likes FIFA apparently. Uh, anyway, I threats over FIFA. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting serious, but 
typically in cases like that where people come at you from that angle, I typically, the first thing I do is I go and look at their profile and I go and look at their responses to other people and I look to see how out of line is it. If it doesn't appear to be out of line, I typically talk to the person. I typically write back either like LOL, yeah, and then I ask them a question. What do you what do you actually what do you actually think about this? I actually take the time to actually show interest in them personally, and then the conversation completely clears up. I've I've done this with several people, several people over the past six years that I still talk to uh, on on a weekly basis on on the internet now, because it, it's people that are just looking for that companionship, and the only way that they know how to get your attention for that companionship is to say something that is going to get your attention and cause an emotional reaction that's how humans work it doesn't make it right but a lot of cases that is what is going on here thank you so much for watching everybody internet haters and trolls everything that's in your tool belt ignore them block them ban them kill them with kindness you could even have a conversation with them if you want and always remember if there's a threat a specific threat to anyone or to yourself call the freaking police don't play around with that we love you guys and we don't want you to be affected by the haters and trolls. So ban all of them. Don't listen to Ross and Perrin. Bye.